Hey guys, Charlie at Casey Turbo. Today we are talking about how bigger is not always better, at least when it comes to turbos. So we get a lot of questions about turbo sizing and what is the best turbo size for their application. And this is a uh, general knowledge information, not vehicle specific. This actually will work for anything from a Nissan GTR all the way up to your big F450 Dually. They're the same principles and no turbo is uh, immune to these problems. So as you go up, from smaller to bigger, you'll gain turbo lag and lose efficiency down low in the RPMs. So what we have here in front of us is a 2011 stock turbo, 2015 stock turbo, and our stage two for the 6.7. So these are F250 turbos, and we just wanna go over, show the sizing, show the pluses and minuses to each one. The smallest by far is the 11 to 14. These turbos spooled incredibly fast, but they ran out of power really quick on the top end. When Ford switched from the 11 to 14 to the 15, you can see that they got much bigger. They went bigger on the turbine wheel and the compressor wheel. You can see how much larger they went on the compressor wheel and the turbine wheel. Well, what did that do? It added a lot of power. Ford jumped up their power levels only slightly, but in the tuning world, you can bump up probably 100 to 150 horsepower between these two. But this one also spools about five to 700 RPMs slower, depending on the application where you are. Where this one would tow and do fine at 11, 1200 RPMs, this one needs to be up more around 16 to 1900 RPMs, depending on how heavy you're pulling and what you're doing. Some people don't notice those differences, other people hated them. Ford implemented a lot of strategies when they went to this, where they bumped up the shift points, made it easier to downshift and change things so it wasn't as noticeable. But that's on a 15 truck. When you put a 15 turbo on an 11 truck, it becomes a little more apparent. If you get a custom calibration, it will help, but you can't get over the lag. So if you go to an even bigger turbo, like our stage two turbo, this is even bigger than a 15 turbo. If you come look at the size difference, it's not as drastic as the 11 to 14 to the 15, but it still is bigger on the compressor wheel and the turbine wheel. So when you go bigger, it's gonna add lag. So uh, there's a big misconception. I'm gonna say one of the biggest misconceptions we get when people are doing turbo sizing is they'll call in and say how they tow a lot. They really like to lug their motor down in the RPMs, maybe 15 to 1800 RPMs, and they want a bigger turbo because they want to be able to tow better. And that's false. That's not what happens. When you put a bigger turbo on, it will tow worse at the lower RPMs. What you're doing is moving the power up in the RPMs, the whole power band. Uh, they might even be similar curves, but you'll notice they move slightly up. So you'll lose torque down low and you'll gain horsepower up top. And what that does is increases your EGTs down low. It might increase smoke under uh, really low RPMs and heavy throttle, and it could make it really hard to tow. In some instances, you might even hear a turbo surge, which we'll go over in just a second. Uh, I'd like to show what this looks like in a graph. So let's hop over to a dyno graph real quick. This is a really good example of the differences. And I'm using non-KC turbos, just so there's no confusion. This isn't a KC turbo problem, this is all turbos. So the green graph here is an S364.5, and the red graph here is an S369. And this is the area where people typically tow is all the way down here. So if you look at that graph, let's say even at you know, 1900 RPMs, the 363 will make one, two, 300 foot pounds of torque more. So that means it has 300 foot pounds of torque available to them at those RPMs, where a 369 would not have that torque available. Well, even if you're only using 500 foot pounds of torque, which the 369 could do, the 363 is gonna do that more efficiently. More efficiently means it'll run cooler, less smoke, even at the same power level down low. Now, as the RPMs increase, you can see the lines cross right here at about 2,500 RPMs. That is the point at which the S369 will start making more power, cooler EGTs, and more boost, and the 363 will fall off. So when you're doing your turbo sizing, you have to figure out whether you're more worried about power down low under 2,500 RPMs or power up top above 2,500 RPMs because you're gaining you know, 100 foot-pounds of torque, maybe 50 horsepower, 
in sacrifice for 150 horsepower or 300 foot-pounds of torque early on. Now, in this specific application, if this bigger turbo had had more uh, available fuel with larger injectors, this would have been exaggerated more. So let's try a different graph. This is on a 6.0 power stroke. The green line is an S362, the blue line is an S364.5, and the red line is an S369. But you can see it has the same problems. Down low on the RPM band, the 362 is gonna make more power and more torque, and run cooler at the same horsepower. But on the top end, the difference between an S362 and an S369 is upwards of 175 horsepower. Uh, maybe 200 uh, foot-pounds of torque. So it, it becomes a bigger and bigger difference, the bigger the turbo and the smaller the turbo. Let's look at a compressor map. For anyone not familiar with a compressor map, you can get similar data out of a compressor map that you can out of a dyno. A lot of people get confused, but just think of corrected flow as RPMs and pressure ratio as boost, and then you get the basic same information. You'll see it's got speed lines on here. That's the speed of the turbo. You've got your efficiency islands and you've got your surge line. Those are what we're gonna be focusing on the most. So efficiency islands, what does that mean? It means cooler air. The closer you are to the center island, the cooler the air will be. That's a, you can see the percentages there, but you don't need to know the exact percentage. Just understand that as you move away from the center island in any direction, whether that be up, down, left, right, the turbo will start to pump out hotter air, which is less efficient, less power. As you move to the right, which is higher RPMs, or up, which is more boost, you will start moving up and out of the efficiency island, or if you lug the motor down in the RPMs and at lower boost levels, you'll do the same thing. And that's why when towing, you wanna aim for the center of this map if you can, because that'll help you with cooler EGTs. I'd like to briefly discuss this line also, which is called the turbo surge line. So if you hit the surge line, it'll make a sound, turbo surge, turbo bark, turbo flutter. That is turbo surge. That means you have too much boost at too low of RPMs. How you fix that? Less boost or higher RPMs. Uh, typically, you don't see that with a really good match turbo. It'll be really hard to hit that uh, turbo surge, but when you get into the bigger VGTs, because the veins can close up, ramp up the boost, ramp up the back pressure, they can hit those, uh, those lines. Or sometimes we see it on dual ball bearing turbos with small turbine wheels. They spool fantastic and they tend to run better from a stop, but if you get it locked in overdrive at lower RPMs, you can have horrible efficiency, higher EGTs, and you can start bouncing off the surge line. Now that you understand a compressor map, let's look at two compressor maps that are overlaid. This is a 6.0 power stroke map that Garrett put out. It's a stock turbo versus a power max upgrade. And now it doesn't have the efficiency islands on there or the speed lines, but the general information is the same. You can see that the bigger turbo, which is the power max, moves the power up in the RPM bands, which means it can make more power higher in the RPMs and it can achieve higher boost levels but it does that at the sacrifice of down here. This would be low in the RPMs and lower in the boost levels where the stock turbo will run more efficiently. So if you're towing and you're hanging out in this area, both turbos will do pretty well. That's probably gonna be up around 2,500 RPMs, maybe 15 pounds of boost. But if you're trying to lug the motor down here, let's say maybe 16, 1700 RPMs, maybe five to 10 pounds of boost, that's where the power max or the larger turbo is really going to struggle, but you're still right in the center of the smaller turbo compressor map. That's how all turbo sizing works for across all applications. It's always give and take. The bigger turbos spool slower, but they'll be more efficient and make more power on the top of the RPM band. Smaller turbos will spool quicker, they'll make power quicker down low, less smoke, less EGTs, and easier to tow down low. A lot of people think that, well, I'm upgrading my turbo, it should be better in every way. And when you take similar technologies and go bigger, they spool slower, but you can improve the technology. For example, I could put a billet wheel on the stock turbo, keep it the same size, and it will spool faster, tow better, and, and work better in every way, but it's not gonna increase power a ton because it's the same size. When you wanna start upping the power, you need to go to a bigger turbo. But when you go to the bigger turbo, you need to understand the downsides of a larger turbo. So when we do our turbos, we typically like to do a stage one, two, and three. I know, everybody hates the stages, but the reason we do it is because our stage ones are typically known as a towing setup. 
They're much more power than stock, but they'll still tow fairly close to stock where you shouldn't have any major towing abilities. Our stage two is what we like to call a street turbo. It still tows and it makes a lot more power than stock, but it's not gonna tow as well as stock or as well as a stage one, but it still does it fairly well. When you get up into our stage threes, we do not recommend it for towing. We always ask, but can I? Yes, you can. It just won't work very well. You'll be struggling with the RPMs. You might hit a little bit of turbo surge. You might have higher EGTs, but you can tow with it. That's not just a KC Turbo problem. That's a problem across all platforms. Something that drives me absolutely nuts is you see a guy that gets online, giant injectors, an S369 or an S472, and he says, oh, I can tow, no problem. And that's what they say online and in private messages. These same guys are asking me, hey, why does my truck run so hot and so smoky? I'm struggling to tow and I have to lock out overdrive and cruise down the freeway at 3,000 RPMs. Well, of course, you're not going to say that online because they want to brag to all their buddies about how bigger is always better. But they're lying to you guys and they're misleading you guys. And then you go and buy that same setup and it sucks. Here's what you need to do. Give us a call, contact us, talk to your tuner, talk to someone that knows turbo sizing, and get the turbo that works best for you. It might not always be the biggest, and you might not always want the smallest. It's really gonna come down to your goals and what you want out of your truck, and that's where we come in. Comment below, message us on Facebook, on Twitter, send us an email, or give us a phone call, and we'll be happy to go over your setup and talk about the different options available to make sure that your truck runs the best.